Hello and welcome to more Live the Dream. No, what is this? Proliferate Cube Draft. I wish it was Live the Dream Cube Draft. I saw Treasure Map and got excited. Um, I'm looking at swords. I don't have much time because I came in late. Um, so I might be missing something, but I feel like just good removal is very hard to beat. Although I do love Treasure Map as well, but like the, the thing I've seen in this format is like the ability to kill a creature is kind of rare and pretty important because a lot of times it's like, someone goes all in on one creature or they have an enabler that's very important so just being able to target down anything for one man i think is very valuable so i like that my second pick would be treasure map i have no idea what this card is but i guess i'll never find out um ooh, paradise mantle i like fabled passage polluted delta and if you have four or more lands on tap okay so fabled passage is not the good one there's like two of them that are like the same where they fetch basic lands but one's untapped and one pays life and like I always get them confused because they're basically the same card. I like Polluted Delta. What is this? It's a seven mana five five flying lifelink. You can sacrifice a creature and power it up and then kill a creature. Like remove all the counters and give something minus one. That seems okay. Not the best. Um, I'm just going to be taking one of these lands I think and I'm not sure what I want to do. Fabled Passage does go in any deck. So this is essentially a five color land but it doesn't get duels. Polluted Delta and Verdant Catacombs go get better the more lands I get. So I think I'm actually just going to take Polluted Delta. I think the ceiling on this is much higher than Fabled Passage. Because you can fetch up a dual land and that's just like quite nice. I do like Lightning Helix. Um, I could take Hero of Bladehold. This seems like maybe one of the formats for Hero of Bladehold. Uh, man, some of these packs look insane and then some of these packs are just like, it's a Light Walker. <laughs> It's not bad, but it just like compared to some of the other cards, like it just it has synergy, but it's not great. But I, I like the targeted removal. Um, counter all abilities they control is fine. I'm just going to take the helix. I think I'm going to see if just all removal is a good strategy. Ion storm, remove a counter and it does two damage to any target. Seems okay. I do like angel of invention. That seems like a nice payoff. I was a huge fan of Simic Manipulator in my last draft. It was like the best card in my deck by far. But I think we're just going to go with Angel of Invention. It's very similar to Maverick Thopterist. Double the number of kind of each counter and any number of target permanents. Man, that would be so good in like a, so many different decks. Yeah, I think I'd rather cut white because I would much prefer to be playing Swords to Plowshares than anything. The other option is taking Tendo Ice Bridge. But I think that card's kind of medium. Ooh, there's Flooded Strand, so that helps with our mana. There is Planar Outburst. That actually is a really strong effect in this format. For some reason, I kept passing it. I didn't know there actually were um, things like that. That's very strong, but uh, I could try and draft a control deck. I've never... I mean, this is only my second draft of this format, so I don't really know. It's between these two. I like the fixing. The artwork's actually just fine. Again, it doesn't look exactly like a magic card, and I don't know how many board wipes there are. I'm going to play it safe, take the planar outburst. Ooh, Dovin, what do you do? <laughs> uh, until end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage, he gets loyalty. You make a Thopter, and then his ultimate is Dig Through Time. Okay, I think maybe I'll just take a Sacred Foundry that cannot get fetched with Polluted Delta, but it makes Lightning Helix easier. The other option is Soul Diviner is good, Grim Poppet, Skargan Hellkite. Yeah, we're just going to go for good mana. I think that's a good start. Uh, Vivid Meadow also helps with the mana. It's a very interesting Inkwath Nexus artwork. Yeah, let's just let's just see what happens if a control deck is possible in this cube. Like burn, turn and burn, uh, is fine. Again, this this format there's a lot of creatures that put counters on them, so this isn't like the best answer because they'll keep the power toughness boost from the counters. But there are also like enablers that you want to kill before they can put counters on them. So it's maybe worth playing. I gotta read Glistening Oil. Gives him Infect, puts a minus one, minus one counter, and was put into a graveyard, return it. So this is actually repeatable ways to kill one ones, which is kind of fun, but it's very slow. So I'm gonna take Turn Burn. You, there could be an argument for Watcher for tomorrow there too, but ooh, I love Arc Blade. I love Arc Blade, but we're gonna take Rails Eric. This just fits the theme of play board wipes, mono five drops. Um, maybe we could like, I guess I can't spark double. I, w I wish I could have um, also gotten an arc blade. It's so slow, but it's just like you suspend it for three and then it kills something and then it exiles and you get it back and it kills something. It's just like the dirtiest possible win condition. 
it's the most Caleb Gannon card <laughs> that I've seen. Um, Val Valor Stance can kill stuff. I'll take that, sure. Um, okay, so all the red-white cards came around. So I think if we want to, we can go red-white. I'm not taking Light Walker. Goblin Banneret. This gets double counters. That's pretty bad. I'll take the Banneret. I think it's the best out of those cards, but it's still not great. I mean, on offense is pretty good. I do like Maverick Thopterist. It has Improvise. Uh, on offense is very good. I'll just take that. Here I can take a Royal Spout. Put a creature on top of its library. I like that more than in the Dock Hand. Soul Diviner versus Infiltrator. I mean, Soul Diviner is very good. I'm not going to be playing Infiltrator. Last pick, Ink Moth. Interesting. Well, I think my hopes and dreams of being mono white control might be gone because, uh, like, white aggro is so open. Getting out of fence of that late, like, this card's insane in this cube, I would think. But we'll see what happens. Ooh, Steel Overseer is pretty good. Rexine Scripture. So there's quite a few combos with this, I think, because if you can take a counter off of it, let me think. I don't know what takes counters off of this, but if you can remove counters from this, because I've th seen things that move plus one plus one counters around, if you can remove counters from this, you could just keep destroying all non-artifact creatures every turn, which is pretty strong. I don't know if I need another five drop. What does she do? Make a servo, make spells cheaper, and then copies artifact tokens? That's fine, but not amazing. Part of me wants to take Blood Crypt because I can get it off Polluted Delta, and that lets this... Uh, it doesn't get white. That's not actually that good. Elite Seal Guard is good, but it costs five. What do I take here? I'm just going to take Blood Crypt. I'm going to stay open a bit. Ooh, Colonnade. I do like Colonnade. Knight of the White Orchid. If someone else controls more lands than you, uh, you get a Plains. I do like Baleful Strix, too. If I somehow end up, like, four colors, that's a really nice one. But I think Colonnade is such a nice payoff. And I do have some blue cards I would like to run. So I'm just going to take that. And see, ooh, Sheldock. Okay, wait a second. Sheldock even viable? <laughs> I don't know how much card draw there is. I don't know how viable Sheldock is. Because I could take like a Prism. I could take a Lotus Bloom. Right? Because how am I going to get my deck size low? Normally I would say this is great because there's like ways to draw cards and it does things. But this cube seems more about like building up a board state and having creatures. So there's a chance I wheel it. And Prophetic Prism really does help this very strange deck. So we'll take the Prism. Because now, now I have the mana to do things. Now... I can basically play every card I would like. Uh, Temple Garden, I don't have any fetches that go with it. I also don't have green. I like Glimmer of Genius. That will be good if I wheel Sheldock, I guess. Rune is Path, I'm a little bit away. We'll just take Glimmer of Genius. This could be a terrible idea, and like control could just be like not a thing in this cube. But if control is in this cube, I am gonna find it. Getting rid of these. Look at this beautiful deck. <laughs> oh my goodness, why am I doing this? I don't advise it, but I always like just seeing what other strategies exist. I think I like Rift Bolt more than the Phoenix. Although, yeah, Double Red's hard to achieve. World of Rogue's also just a very good card. Maybe I like that more. Um, no, I'll take the Rift Bolt. I don't know. Both were quite good, actually. Edifice is good. Windswept Teeth is okay. I kind of like Wanderer's Strike. Five mana exile anything. And then you proliferate, so if I have, like... Ral, Angel of Invention, other things. Um, this can power it up. It's good in the Planeswalker deck. I think Edifice is a better card, though. We're uh, Yeah, I, I just kind of take Edifice. There's also a chance that the card I wanted wheels. Uh, Shivan Meteor, 13 damage to a creature is kind of fun. This kills any creature for 3 mana. Okay. I think I need to take a Needle Spires. Like, I kind of need win cons, and these cards are fine, but I just need to make sure I can cast everything, because... We are attempting the solid five color control in this cube. Avenger of Zendikar for the top end. You may reveal a Kithkin, it enters tapped. No, I'm not going to do that. Guild Animator is pretty bad here. All right, Avenger of Zendikar for the top end. Get in there. Sahili now is not looking like the worst thing. Sure. Baleful Strix came around. I do like me a Baleful Strix. The Death Touch is very relevant. Lotus Bloom, I think I have to take for <laughs> mana consideration. Although. This is Johnny ticking up and gaining me life? No, I gotta take Lotus Bloom. It's like quite necessary. Same with Chromatic Star, I just need <laughs> I need to make sure I get my fixing. I wish I kinda wish I had taken um the the land with hideaway, but I I mean look at my mana. There's no way this is gonna work if unless I have Prophetic Prism. I don't know if this is good. 
I am going to be honest, but I have Planar Outburst Ink Moth Nexus, I guess is another potential win condition. Um, I'll just take the Deathlands, I guess. You can sacrifice this to put two counters on a creature. Okay. Uh, I'm not playing the Scythe, so I guess I take Hadana's Climb. This flips into a land that gives double strike. Oh no, it just gives them plus X plus X. Probably not playing that. Probably not playing the Beetle. I don't know how this deck wins, but we will figure it out together. It's something like using Lotus Bloom to cast an Avenger of Zendikar, which I'm okay with. Um, Astral Cornucopia is a good start. Marsh Flats can grab Sacred Foundry and Blood Crypt. So that's actually quite nice. I think I'm going to take Marsh Flats here because most of my early plays are, well, <laughs> there are many colors, but this helps with all of those. Um, this is a 3 mana 5 4 flyer, which is good. I'm gonna get good stuff out of this pack, but I'm just gonna take the, the land. Um, what is this? Counter target spell exiles it with X delay counters. Okay, so it just. There really aren't any hard counters in this cube, are there? I like Tybalt. I like Banishing Light. Flylath. Pretty good too. Um, Stomping Ground. Again, doesn't go with any of my fetches, unfortunately. I think we're gonna take Banishing Light. When this deals damage, proliferate, that seems good. Yeah, just unconditional removal seems good. Psionic Blast is in here, that's fun. Um, Wooded Foothills feels like something I need to take. So that can grab Sacred Foundry, Blood Crypt. If I end up playing green, it's good for there. Grim Grin. Oh, you have to sacrifice creatures. Yeah, I'm not going to have many of those. I think I'm going to take Wooded Foothills and try and wield this Tragic Slip. Or like a Fairgrounds Warden or something. It seems good. Vivid Creek. That helps quite a bit. But Hagrid Mulling, it's a land spell, right? No, I need Vivid Creek. I need to make sure I can cast my things. I think the, the thing that's going to kill me here is there's no bounce lands in this format. That's like the only way I can really make this deck work, but we're doing our best. We got far away. Five color control. If anyone can make it work, <laughs> I'll at least do my best. Um, and I guess my win con is just creature lands, right? I have Ink Moth Nexus. I have Needle Spires. And then I have uh, Royal Spout and Planar Outburst to put counters on them. Koth of the Hammer requires me playing uh, mountains. So I think we just take Scrubland because that makes Polluted Delta quite a bit better. Not, I mean, I do have a couple. I'm just going to take Scrubland. Koth being in here is pretty nice, though. You know, I think just the creature, the creature land win cons is actually not that bad now that I have Lava Claw, too. All right. This works for me. I don't think I can play Soul Diviner. Although it is actually kind of good with my Planeswalkers. Ooh, that. Quarantine Field, Jace couldn't cast away, makes illusions. And then the ultimate makes copies of Jace. That's pretty bad, actually. Um, I think I'm just going to take Quarantine Field. Now I have like a lot of good unconditional removal. Sure. Astral Cornucopia came around. What does this do? Scry 2, choose a card name. Then you get to draw 2, but it's like very slow. I don't think I actually need the Cornucopia. What even is this? Okay, well, I'm not having things die. So it's between Absent and the Prophecy. I guess I'll take the Prophecy. It's very similar to Scry 2, Draw 2. And basically this, this deck is missing um, card draw, right? Because we're, we're going to one for one a lot, but we don't have any way to recoup that card loss. Stomping Ground helps me cast Avenger of Zendikar, I guess. So I'll take it. And I can fetch it up with Wooded Foothills. Um, Sonic Blast, I guess, is removal. This does four damage to any target and two damage to you, even though it does not have artwork. Probably not playing that. Grenzo's bad, a crow in war. Each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. I think Grenzo, I don't know, can play it as a big thing, I guess. This is a gamble. I <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. This is basically a stipulation. Uh, Crater Maker's got to be better here. Okay, I mean, we're doing our best. Actually, Lesser Master Core could be interesting. Okay, Um, I don't think I can actually afford to play Lotus Bloom. I think... I just have to believe in the heart of the card that I will get all my mana on time. I have Angel of Invention, Avenger of Zendikar as my finishers, and then just a bunch of removal. Oh, I don't even know Springleaf Drum is here. That's actually pretty good. So 36 total with 14 land puts us at 22, which means I run 18 land, which is actually fine because I'm running Ink Moth Nexus. So just add lands and ship it. Yeah, I just had four lands. <laughs> um... All right, the real question is, can I ever actually cast Avenger of Zendikar? I have Stomping Ground, two Vivid Lands. I think so. It, it's Prophetic Prism. 
<laughs> Let's go through the, the other colors first. So wooded foothills, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven white sources. I actually don't know if I need a plains. Blue, I might even have too many. Does this get blue? No. So I at least need a, an island so that polluted delts I can grab blue. So one island. Um, do I need a mountain right now? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That seems like more than enough. So I'm going to get rid of a mountain. Swamps, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's plenty. So I'm actually going to add a forest. And then do I want two islands? Because I actually have quite a few early blue cards. Uh, again, we have one, two, three. Yeah, I want another island. This is one of the most... Oh, I get another land. Perfect. This is one of the more ridiculous mana bases I've ever had. Uh, I don't even know. Let me... I'm going to... What do I have here? Let's sort by color. I have a lot of white... And my white sources are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm actually going to add one more white source. 18 land. All this stuff. Seems good to me. I will see you all round one. Let's see, <laughs> Let's see how this deck does. All right, we're playing against Irelis. Let's go first. I almost want to go second with this deck. I'm going to keep. Um, I have some number of spells. And we're going to lead on Vivid Creek because it's... The most general, I guess, but I mean, like this hand, it's good if I can just hit lands. Okay, quarantine field is fine. At least I'm not discarding the hand size for a bit. Devoted druid, I think, is fine. The way that this deck is going to play out, I just need to let them deploy their threats, kill their threats, and then I'm gonna like planar outburst is gonna kill devoted druid anyway. So like, I don't care about them accelerating because I'm just trying to have more kill spells than they have threats. And this is an important thing to keep track of, especially if you're playing cube. Like, it's very tempting to be like, oh, I can kill the Devoted Druid. But if you answer the Devoted Druid and then they play an X2 that, like, actually impacts the board, like, whatever this is. Whenever it enters, put a counter on a creature you control. Whenever it attacks, put a counter on each attacking creature with a counter. See, like, this is way scarier than the Devoted Druid. So I might have to kill it. But if I had killed the Devoted Druid, they still would have been able to play this. So... I think I'm just going to burn this. So we're going to fetch with Wooded Foothills. <laughs> what mana do I even have? I think I need to get a Blood Crypt. That seems correct. So let's burn this for two. Oh, that only costs two? Okay, well... <laughs> whoops. But anyway, yeah, now, now they have a Devoted Druid, which can let them play more things, but whatever they play, I'm just going to continue killing it, right? So this effectively does nothing. Rango Root Geist. That one's actually moderately annoying. And Soul Diviner actually blocks pretty well. We'll just play that and hope for the best. Sure. I can actually remove my Vivid counters to draw cards, which is some cool synergy. And I will block if they attack. Like, I don't think there's that many pump effects here. And if they're just like powering this up so that they can attack next turn, that's fine. Contagion. Oh no. Okay, that's kind of rough. But. They no longer have the ability to shrink their Strangle Root Geist so it survives. So if I can hit a land here and set up for a Planar Outburst, I think I'll be in business. Okay, there's our land. So we're going to play it. We're going to take a pretty big hit here, but I think that's okay. They can proliferate with Contagion Clasp. Okay. It really depends on how much damage I'm willing to take here because... They have three cards in hand. I'm going to bounce the soldier. Whoa. Yeah, far here. And I need white mana. We bounce there. If they proliferate, I'm probably just going to kill the Strangle Root Geist. Because they're, they're going to want to get up to four counters to draw with first row in games anyway. So I would like to prevent that. So like them proliferating means they're not going to have anything else going on this turn. Okay, cool. So they proliferate. And this does not come back if it had a counter on it. So th this gets bigger, but it still gets bounced. Oh, I see what they're doing. Ah, uh, that's clever. So now first row in games triggers, they do get to draw a card regardless. That's a little bit worse. All right, fair enough. Gets bounced. Um, I think I'm just gonna kill this and take like no damage. Them, get 
No, really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it, it has two modes, right? Destroy target creature or... Oh, toughness. Never mind. Oh, toughness. I thought it was power. That's on me. I just threw away my card. Ah, uh, that's rough. Um, we still get to Rift Bolt this. Yeah, not my best moment. You know, sometimes you think it's that, and then like, on top of that, I was actually able to cast and target it. They play Wildborn Preserver. They're going to play something and make this big. And then I'm going to draw my land. It's still winnable from here. It's just unfortunate that... I mean, they, they got to keep their Geist. Oh, Varals is a problem. I need to draw land. I don't think there's a way around it. Untapped. I have to specify. Untapped land here. Okay. I go to four. And they have a Hissing Quagmire, which is relatively problematic. Um, I can't get Sacred Foundry because I die immediately. Yep. All right. Cast. So I need to draw an, another untapped land to block Hissing Quagmire with Colonnade. Otherwise, we're in big trouble. Yeah, just not, not having the kill spell for their creature because I like used it on accident is probably going to end up costing us this game. But we'll see what happens. So Pony played... Sorry, I disappeared. They, they played Plain White Celebration and they got back... What did they choose? Got back Orin Reef Ooze and Strangle Root Geist. Yikes. That was a good uh, seventh card there. Um, I'm dead. I don't want to show them any more of my deck. Because they can just play Strangle Root Geist and then... I, I can Goblin Crater Maker block, kill one, but then like from there it just gets worse and worse. Okay, I think I don't really have much of a sideboard, so we run it back. And part of me wants to go on the draw, actually, because um, I, I just missed land drops. I'm going to be one for one them. I'm actually going to go second, because my deck's just full of one for ones. It puts me behind on tempo, but I think it's the only way I'm going to be able to outlast them. And their deck isn't like that fast. Here we can go Lava Claw Reaches. Because I, I have the Polluted Delta, I think I just have Basic Island. So we'll do that. I don't want them to know that I have Vivid Meadow just yet. Hopefully they don't have Strangle Root Geist. Well, it's not that. Devoted Root is fine. It's a lot of mana, but I think that's okay. So let's get an Island. Black Blue for this. Next turn, um, unless I draw... Anything too crazy, we're just going to go Vivid Meadow draw card. That hurts. That Thoughtseize is very good against us. So they can take Quarantine Field. And then I'm just left with a hand that like is very bad. Oh, I just noticed. Quarantine Field, when it, it enters with Isolation counters, and it exiles equal to the number of counters there are, but then you don't need those counters like after the fact. So unfortunately they take it, but... You can actually take the, the counters with Soul Diviner, and it doesn't, like, <laughs> it's not that bad. Okay, that is kind of a problem. That's a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, I like the Prophecy. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Scry 2. So Valorous Stance is going to be able to kill the Ooze. I want both of these. We're going to play Vivid Meadow. Last turn, and Soul Diviner, that is a really good combo. Wait, never mind. Does not remove from enchantments. <laughs> All these cards are so niche. This is like anything besides enchantments. Okay, but they need six mana for something? Uh-oh. What costs six mana? Okay. That's big. It fights. It has trample. Move a counter from Vivid Meadow. This becomes a 4-4. Four, four. All right, how am I going to play this? I think I really probably just want to Valorous Stance. It's unfortunate because like, I don't know what else I'm doing here. So I can play Sahili this turn and make a 1-1 a one -one, and that'll chump block the Ooze, but I guess Sahili just dies to the Hydra, so that doesn't make sense. Um, I can just Valorous Stance the Ooze and take 4 and then just hope to find an answer to the Hydra. That probably makes the most sense to me, which means next turn um, they take 4 down to 11. I don't know. Because Rail only does three. Sahili's like really bad. I could play Sahili here and the next turn go Rail into Valorous Stance. But then the, the Hydra gets bigger. So I think next turn I'm going to play Rail or Sahili. And this is Sahili the Gifted. And here we just go Scrubland Pass. I could Valorous Stance, but um, 
maybe they play something pre-combat that changes my mind. <laughs> now that I know it's toughness, I can uh, destroy this. That card's scary, though. They have three cards in hand, so I need them to not be winners. Taking my quarantine field hurt, though, because that would have been my answer to the Hydra. See, Huli is just bad. Hume Spitter can kill my 1-1, I guess. Ah, man. Casting Rel into Crater Maker would have been pretty nice. But I do have Swords to Plowshares. So I guess we're going to play into that. Play Sahili. Red. Here. Yeah, here's an example of turn burn just, just not being good. We uptick. Um, the nice thing here is, like, it's actually kind of hard for them to kill Sahili. They could ignore her, but then she starts making a defense. They're tapping way too quickly, though. Ugh. All right. That kills my servo. Then they get to attack Sahili. But she she basically gained five life. They can double proliferate, but if I can kill their Hydra, then that doesn't matter. And I get to look at the top card of their library? Each player. Okay. Oh, I'm drawing Planar Outburst, and they're drawing a Forest. That's very good to know, actually. Um, I think I can kill Contagion Engine, but that actually doesn't matter that much. I can take four, five, six, seven, and fall to three if they just, like, attack and activate Contagion Engine. I think I just like waiting and then passing, because I know they're just drawing a land. So I'm going to take the hit, and then we can stabilize after this, because I'm drawing the board wipe. And this is just look, it doesn't reveal, so they don't know that I'm drawing a board wipe. The other thing is if they... That's an interesting attack. Okay. They're not contagion engineering. Alright, well, they have land plus one unknown in hand, and their board is gone. Three, four, five. Sterile non-land creatures. Go ahead. Tuscard captain, it's a 2-3. They cannot outlast. Yeah, and here's where we start taking over. So I can go one, two, three, four. Play Ralzaric. Tap their forest, untap my island. Put this on top of their library. And then, then if they play it, I could just Ralzaric it down. I think we've stabilized. They play it. So let's kill this. Play our angel. Uh, we'll play this too. And I'm gonna make servos. Just in case they happen to kill my angel. And I guess I, I'll wait on the crater maker. That's unfortunate. Okay. Skin render comes in, kills my angel. Relzer kills skin render. Ooh, Glimmer was huge there. So let's kill this. Um three, four. Let's cast Glimmer now. Cause I would like to hit a land, maybe. Oh, these are all good. Top, top. Play Belfal Strix, I guess. Now let's go for maximum mana efficiency and just play Edifice. And I'm just going to attack with one servo because of Strangle Root Geist. It's a possibility. Yeah, we got there. All right. All right, game three. I think being on the draw, it didn't actually matter there. I think I just keep it the same. All right, so the opponent chose to play first. I have two lands. Wooded Foothills cannot get access to blue mana, but I do have an Edifice of Authority. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to keep. It's not great, but if I draw lands, this hand actually will be quite nice. Because Edifice is like the perfect removal spell and then like Glimmer and Far Away can help me get me there too. We just need them to not have a turn to Accelerant. All right, that's not the best thing I want to see. I just need a land. I'm running 18 lands. And they don't have anything. I don't think I fetch because I'm fine drawing any land. Okay. This deck. <laughs> uh, I wonder what the odds are of me hitting a land in three draw steps. Let's see. I'm running 18. I have two. There's, ooh, that's bad. Um, I have two in play, there's 30 left, and there's 17 out of 30, so each one's like better than a 50% chance, and that's three at 50%. Like nine, like high 80s or low 90% chance that I hit a land. They didn't have a creature, which is good. If I could just hit any land here, even if it's tapped, I'd prefer untapped, but that's bad. I still stand by my keep. Um, got to discard the hand size. Super unfortunate. We'll discard Sahili because she's terrible. I think that's probably too much. Like, if I could draw a land there, away their Wildborn Preserver, and then, like, I don't know, play an Edifice next turn, or set up for Ralzaric, maybe I have a shot. But it's just too much. I don't 
I don't know if mulliganing was correct, because again, the, the problem with this deck in particular is I have a lot of one-for-one one answers, but that's it. I don't have many, like, two-for-ones. So even if I answer every set they play, I can fall behind in cards, and that's an issue. So they just play a big creature here. Okay, Hydra for two. They don't hit anything. Well, the land here wouldn't be horrible. And by wouldn't be horrible, I mean is absolutely necessary. Come on, deck, please. Unreal. Um... All right, I will discard. I guess at this point, Glimmer of Genius is pretty bad. Longer for release. I mean, again, I'm not dying so quickly. Take four. Land? There we go. And it's blue. That's helpful. Um, hmm. Kind of like playing Soul Diviner. I don't think their deck would have too much removal in it currently. Let's go Soul Diviner, pass. I, I can at least block or something. Because I think they're going to get mana, they're going to make Wildborn Preserver very big, is my guess. Beginning of combat spell? What are they doing? Oh, you know what? They're going to play Plain Wide Celebration, I think. After, like, post-combat. Very strange. Okay, that's a problem. And I don't think they've played a land yet? Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> All right, I'm probably dead because these are going to become one ones, probably two twos, and that's ten damage already. Yeah, yeah, I just missed too many lands in a row. I mean, that's par for the course. I possible I should have mulliganed, but you can do the math of like what the odds were for me to hit a land. I think they were quite high. Um, I think I want Sacred Foundry, Crater Maker. Um. It doesn't really work how I would like it because Crater Maker can block. I'm just dead. I'm gonna bounce a plant. Yeah, missing a land there too was like so brutal. Because my only out was drawing the board white, but I don't think I have an answer to all of this. Oh, it is trample. Yeah, we're just dead. Alright. <laughs> we'll we'll move on to next game. What was I drawing? There they are. Alright, see you guys next round. All right, we're playing against Warforger91. We're on the play. Same seems all right. Uh, we, can, we can actually cast a Baleful Strix, which is quite nice. We go Vivid Meadow, Blood Crypt Untapped, Baleful Strix turn two. Just need to land here. Yeah, this hand actually looks really sweet. I like this a lot. Uh, not as much against Beaumont Courier, although, I mean, technically that can help me deck them out faster because they're not going to be popping Beaumont Courier for a while. Blood Crypt. Um, I actually really want to maxim like make sure I hit a land next turn. So I'm actually just going to play the Prophecy here, because missing a land is so bad. Scry 2 can help me set up for my land drop next turn, and like the earlier I get this down, the better it is. Basically, I'm taking a turn off, taking one extra damage, just to make sure I get smooth, smooth sailing from here on out. And I'm glad I did, because those were both terrible draws. Opponent sent me a message. Saying, hey man, I really enjoy your content. Cool to play against you. Hey, thank you. Great to play against you too. God, my keyboard is so out of the way for me to be able to type that this is unbelievably difficult. So that's my explanation for not uh, chatting up too much with the opponent. So we need them to not play anything too crazy. Okay, we draw land. That's good. Um, I'm just going to name Chromatic Star. I think um, pretty likely I cast that next turn. And I think I like just casting away on Beaumont Courier. Let's go Martial Arts Pass. Because basically, if I have Rail's Eric, I can Chromatic Star after playing Rail, like I untap. If I don't, I could just go like Chromatic Star, Baleful Strix or whatever. They play Legionnaire. I don't think I want to give them the choice. So let's get... I already have Red. I guess we'll just get Scrubland. Make them sacrifice a creature. And, yeah, I mean, I have to hit a land to be able to even play Rao, which is why I didn't want to name Rao. Ooh, what is this? Whenever it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Okay. Well, we're going to cast Chromatic Star. Draw two. Hit our land. Perfect. And I think for the sake of mana efficiency, I'm just going to Royal Spell the Porcelain Legionnaire. Put that on top. That way they play it next turn, and then I can go either Rails or I kill it or do something else. Doesn't really matter. 
One it appears to be a nice, like, focused black red deck. One day I'll draft one of those. But th this is fun. Like, it's this is an archetype that I don't think this cube was really built to support. So it's fun, like, just seeing if we can make that happen. Then we get to look at the top card. So they're drawing Swamp. I'm drawing a Crater Maker, which is actually pretty good. Okay, so let's go with... Ah, the problem is, if they have removal, this plays pretty bad. But I guess I'm going to play Crater Maker. Yeah, let's play Belfal Strix. They're just drawing a land. So they would have to have two removal spells in hand for this to get bad. And even then, I have Crater Maker. And then we're going to crack this for red to try and hit an untapped land. That doesn't hurt me. Okay. Um... I think it's worth it to play Stomping Ground untapped here. Because I get to do that, and then I have blockers. I'm going to take it, like, I'm at a virtual 9 because both of these... Oh, this only hits creatures or planeswalkers. Okay, never mind. I'm at a virtual 11. Because now they just concede. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So they don't know much about my deck, which is quite nice. Um, I mean, we run it back. I am, in fact, playing 18 lands. I just had to make sure. Because it, it's been challenging to draw lands with this deck. Hey, there's the Swords of Plowshares. Sounds pretty good. It's got uh, card advantage, cheap removal. My opponent led on Graven Cairns into Hope of Giraper. One mana flyer, and if they sacrifice it, I can't cast non-creature spells. All right. I don't think Wasteland is in this format, so we're just going to play Chromatic Star. Pass turn. Oh, man, that Scalding Tarn looks pretty cool. The border on that one does look kind of nice, so I'm okay with that. Rim Initiate. Ugh. All these 1-1s one -ones make my removal, like, pretty awkward. I mean, we're gonna probably just crack Chromatic Star and burn Soulscar Mage. I'd be very impressed if they sacrifice Hope of Gearper. Uh, hmm. Because now I might need this for blue. Alright, I'm just gonna shock. Burn. Red, whatever. Next turn I can hardcast Rift Bolt if I need to. My lack of having two twos in my deck is actually pretty rough. Although maybe my opponent just has like creature removal in hand. Krenko. Whenever it attacks, put a counter on it, then makes counters. Okay, well we have to kill Krenko. Krenko's not surviving this turn. And I draw a vivid creek. <sighs> okay. So I have so many four drops I want to cast. I guess I just have to get lucky. We just cast Rift Bolt here. Like, we, we can't let them untap with Kranko, because that would be so bad. They're, they only have two cards in hand, I'm at 15. Basically, if I draw any untapped land, I can play Sahili, which is, like, somehow good here. If I don't, I, I mean, I get to Chromatic Star, play Swords, um, and then have, like, some pretty good four drops in the following turns. And I guess we will be Swords to plowshares in Yaheni, because that's actually a lot of damage. Prophetic Prism. All right, so I'm going to crack this for blue. Because I do have a couple blue black cards that would be okay here. Lava Claw. Then we're going to play Prism. Edifice is also pretty nice. So let's just kill this now. And then play Vivid Creek because I have two blue cards I'd like to cast. One missed a land drop, which means they have two spells in hand. Or they just like messed up. That's... Oh. That's really bad. I guess that's why you wait to swords, huh? Ugh. Yeah, all right, that's why you wait to cast swords. Um, I don't think I can draw into my board wipe. I'm at three life. That's an insane amount of damage. They sacked Hope of Giraper. Fair enough. I was dead anyway, but fair enough. I'm just, I'm just going to concede. I, I can't draw anything off of Glimmer because my swords is gone. <laughs> they actually got me with the hope. I like it. Um, we're just going to run it back. I just, I need to be more patient with swords. That's all. Against this person, I'm definitely going to go first. Yeah, I'll keep it. It's not pretty. But Angel seems like it goes a long way. I didn't see... I don't think I saw, like, any removal spells from them. And I saw most of their hands both games. So I might just make Angel of Invention into a big lifelinker. Uh, obviously, depending on the board. But, like, on an empty board, Angel of Invention with lifelink is not crazy. Okay. I was scared of Thoughtseize for a second. Thoughtseize taking Angel makes this hand do, like, pretty much nothing. Lava Claw. I like more than Sacred Foundry. We'll play Chromatic Star into Lava Claw. And now I can basically play most of my spells off Chromatic Star. I need to save it for blue mana, but... Ooh, that's good. If opponent lost four or more life, it gets big. Okay. 
Um, I actually like waiting a turn here. Play this tapped because if they want to spend their mana like a uh, pumping Knight of the Ebon Legion, that takes their whole turn, and then I can put it on top of their deck, so it's like kind of a double time walk. Obviously, they can choose to not do it, and I take a bunch of damage in the process, but then I get to like play Angel after they play Knight. It seems worth it, even though I'm taking six damage here. They didn't pump. <laughs> oh no. Yep, Pranko's a problem. I mean, I could also just draw my board wipe, which would be good. Blood Crypt. All right, let's crack this for blue. See what we hit. Soul Diviner. Um, I mean, I haven't seen any removal spells from them. This is hard. I don't know what's better in this position. Because I play Soul Diviner, it can block Rakdos, Cackler, Royal Spout. It's got to just be Royal Spout. Put this on top. Play Blood Crypt tapped. Last turn. Then I have Angel of Invention available. And now they just pump. So I take 6, go to 11. So I'm, I'm really glad I went with Royal Spout because it like just shut them off of mana pretty effectively. And I draw Glimmer, which is currently uncastable. Alright, Angel. Get in there. Definitely going with Servos. Opponent sent me a message. Yikes. Yikes is correct. So we're going to make Servos. Last turn. So they can make this really big, but that'll take their whole turn. So if I just like block with a servo, I do need to draw something. That is, that is the truth. But if Angel of Invention goes uncontested here, I think the blocks just go like this. If they kill my angel, so be it. I need blue mana, green mana, or a spell. So basically any non-plain swamp land would be ideal. Ooh, there's the green. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can cast an Avenger of Zendikar in this deck. Who would have guessed? So the plan here is to play Stomping Ground tapped and then hold up Needle Spire's activation. When it's missing land drops pretty strongly, which is good for me. Play this tapped. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so we get to play Avenger. It's a 5-5. Five, five. That's huge. Let's see what happens here. Okay, they're going for it. Well, kill spell and needle spires is very bad, but if they had a kill spell, they would have um killed my angel, I would think. Right? Like it just seems like you just kill the angel here. So I block there. Part of me wants to block the knight. Part of me thinks it's fine to just take the damage. That's five. I think it's fine to just take the damage. Because I'm gaining two life anyway from my attacks. Okay, they they must have just forgot I could activate needle spires. Or they wanted the goblin because they have Hellrider in hand and they're setting up for that. That's the other option. Oh, yeah. Keeping Angel in play when I'm about to play Avenger of Zendikar just makes sense. P and Kirin. Okay, so that's not the end of the world. Vanishing Light will be good in a second. Um, Let's just land Avenger. <laughs> I never would have expected this. That's for sure. So if they want to be able to attack, they need to sacrifice a Thopter, at which point, like, they can't use Knight. And I'm not going to let them trade with Angel so easily. Because if they, basically, if they, like, play Hellrider, like, this just doesn't let them jam, like, Hellrider or something. They have to spend three mana to kill Angel. But I need to draw blue. Like, <laughs> right now my hand does absolutely nothing without blue mana. So in hindsight, making the angel into a 4-3 I think would have just been better. Because I still would have been able to block the 2-2. Two -two. I would have hit for 4 and gained 4. And I would have been able to attack last turn. So I guess I should have just read my read that opponent had actually no removal. But we'll see what happens here. No attacks? Alright. Well now if I just draw a land. Or a lightning helix. Both of those are pretty nice. Um, the thing is I can't really attack either. I kind of want to banishing like the knight because that does get like pretty problematic eventually. One, two, three. And I still have lightning helix and lava claw reaches. Sure. So we banishing light. Exile the knight. Who would have thought it'd be o ringing a o ringing a one drop, but here we are. That happens. No attacks with angel, no land, unfortunately. They kill my angel. Oh, they're going face? Um, in that case, 
Let's just lightning helix the P in here. They're going face. I did not expect that. Yeah, this stops them from being able to throw things, and now I'm in pretty good shape. I could have also killed their second Thopter, but if they had another artifact, then like things get bad. GG's man. Alright, I think Warforger, when you watch this back, you can see it way too early. Like this game was nowhere near over. You had three spells in hand, because I know because you um were missing land drops earlier. Or or you were holding lands in hand. But even if your hand was all lands, like you, you just need to like kill my angel and then you're not in the worst position. Anyway, uh, we will see you guys round three. All right, now this this is a hand. I'm gonna keep this one. We can polluted delta for scrubland, wooded foothills for scalding tarn, or not scalding tarn. Wow, I have all my colors. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cause I don't need double red. I need as much white as I can get. So this is gonna get black white. This is gonna get red white. And then I have blue. Yeah, and then I have all my colors. Sweet. And opponent's playing green, which seems like in general it would be a rough matchup, but we'll see. They say, oh hey, same to you, I assume this is being recorded. Yep, smiley face. Ooh, that's a good one. So I think I'm gonna have to shock probably with the wooded foothills, I mean. This grabs scrubland, yeah, scrubland. Needle spires is good too. So I'm gonna play this. Um, I can fetch it instant speed if they play a creature. I probably should just kill it anyway, so I don't know. It doesn't exactly make sense for me to let them untap, but I, it's cube. There aren't that many like pump effects in cube, but I guess if I was going to do this, I might as well. Oh, I guess now that I have needle spars, I could just get a stomping ground, huh? All right, sure. Wait, red. Down to 16, up to 19. The only thing that punishes me, I shouldn't have said this, is Mana Gorge or Hydra. Tusk Guard Captain is fine, especially if they don't spend their turn outlasting. Uh, let's needle spires. I don't think it matters too much, but next turn we're playing either rail or Sahili. Probably just gonna be rail killing Tuskard Captain. This card's really bad. I don't know why this is in the format, honestly. Rail plus Nissa. So this works out. So let's go land rail Zarek. Kill the Tuskard Captain. There's no way that they can kill. Rel Zarek with a plant, at least with onboard tricks. And then I can either play Angel or Sahili or Banishing Light, depending on what seems more important. I hope opponent is impressed with my mana. <laughs> it's not the best mana base, because uh, I was missing blue for a long time last game. Okay, they make a plant. Tonto Vanguard. Um, Glimmer of Genius. Um, I don't like playing Angel. We play Lava Claw Reaches, then we tap their forest, untap this. All right, fine, I'll move to second main. Sure, if you're gonna float mana, I'm gonna wait. Okay, not that I'm saying it's necessarily bad, but like, if you, like, I don't think there's a card in the format they could cast there. If you're like holding blue mana, it makes sense to bluff to like get your opponent, but if there's literally not a card in the format, I'm gonna make servos. I could do plus one plus one counters. That's so tempting. Two counters. It's a 4-3 flying Vigilance Lifelink. They only have three mana. What, like what? I don't, there aren't that many cards that can kill them in the format. The downside is that they can kill Rel Zarek with the Danto Vanguard attacking. Whereas if I had servos, I could chump. But I think this plays better for the long game because like, again, they only have three mana. They've missed quite a few land drops. And unless they have swords, I don't know of many cards that kill this. What did they just do? They gave it indestructible now? Oh, Primal Might! <laughs> Alright, I got max punished. Fair enough. I think Primal Might was like the one card in the cube that does it. Um, well now I can kill Sahili pretty easily. I take a bit on the backswing, but, or not Sahili, Nissa I mean. Because this has a double strike. We kill Nissa. Their land, pass turn. And then I have Banishing Light. I can also spend 5 mana to kill a Danto Vanguard, but I guess at that point I just Banishing Light the Vanguard. And if I hit a land, that would be ideal, because then I can go Sahili plus Banishing Light. Alright, well, I guess I will be hitting Shalai with... Hmm. They can't really pump their team. I think I like going Soul Diviner, Banishing Light, Shalai. Because then Sahili can make Thopters that chump the Adanto. Soul Diviner blocks their 1-2s. Exile that. And again, I can always turn burn a Danto Vanguard because it loses all abilities. 
So it loses indestructible. Oh, that's a really good draw actually for them. But they do have to lose a plant in the process. But I don't think it matters. It's it's a one mana creature that is also a land. Clark. And the opponent has three spells in hand. Unless one is a 4-4. Four, four. I'm at eight. Ooh, Crater Maker, destroy target colorless non-land permanent. That's good. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, the problem is I need a land for that, don't I? Two, three, four. Let's play Sahili. Sahili makes a Thopter. This is hard. I could just play Glimmer of Genius, and that almost guarantees that I can hold up Crater Maker. I think I like that more. Play Glimmer. I wish I could uh, bottom that. That's too slow. And I'll top this land. Avenger's good. Play this. Let's play Crater Maker. Go ahead. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's very, very problematic. <laughs> but it's fine. If they swing like that. We have a pretty straightforward blocks here. I think I have to shock myself. No, I can just get a planes. I block here and then I kill endless one. When it's like, do I pay the life? They do. Kill that. I don't take any damage, but land. I put that on the bottom. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. What even is this world? Um, one, two, three, four. Ugh. I guess I really want to play lands with Avenger. So we're just going to play Sahili here and make a Thopter. Because then I can at least start drawing cards with Soul Diviner, which will be nice. Cathar's Crusade is a huge problem, though. Like, they can just make a, a Danto land thing, and, like, <laughs> that does a lot. Yikes. Okay. So that enters. They get to pump their whole team. I'm going to... At this point, I'm just resolved to chump blocking a Danto Vanguard forever, so I'm just going to burn the Tempered Veteran right now. Because they just attack with Plant Adonko. I chump block. They can't make an Adonto token here, so... Sure. I block. This is Sahili doing good work. Okay, that, that's actually pretty small. I know it pumps the rest of their team, but... We're going to get to a Vendor of Zendikar very soon, hopefully. I need to draw a land in the top two. But I guess if I don't draw a land, I'm drawing spells, which is also pretty good. Edifice deals with the Danto quite nicely. Royal Spout. All right, well, we did not draw a land, actually. Um, I guess Servo. What's the mana? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm like one short of everything. Plus one. Actually, no, this is fine. I can um, Royal Spout the Vampire token. I think, I don't think it matters. I guess I'll get rid of the plant. No, we'll get rid of the vampire. That is lifelink. Then I play edifice. We're doing it somehow. Edifice soul diviner also works because I can put a pyramid counter and then remove it to draw cards if I want to like ultimate Sahili. And this is for each artifact, not just non-token artifacts. Airdrone's Warden's a big problem. That pumps their team too. But it actually works if I can draw my board wipe now. So they're targeting that, so we're going to stop this from attacking. Then I'm going to remove a counter from here. There's Rift Bolt. Sahili dies. No, Sahili goes to one. I die. Okay. Fair enough. Block. Alright, that give me land. Good enough. Avenger. Two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Play Avenger. <laughs> the least expected card. Play Ink Moth. Put counters on it. Definitely put counters. The Healy's gonna make a thing. Pass turn. We're basically like stalling until I can draw my board wipe. And then it's just gonna be. Ah, the problem is they're still gonna have Cathar's Crusade. So I need to draw the thing that exiles like X target permanence. Path to exile. Okay. I have one basic. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so beginning of combat, we stop this from attacking. And they use their white mana so they can't actually pump their whole team. So their, their attacks are actually not good. All right, I will block this with everything. Six, seven. If they can give it death touch, I will cry. But other than that, I think we're fine. I'm trading two plants for their plant. That seems totally worthwhile. Ooh, and we draw a colonnade? 
So let's go ahead and land the prophecy. See what we're dealing with. Vivid Creek Bottom Swords. I guess we'll put it on top. Make a servo. I'm not going to attack with Ink Moth. I think I'm a little bit away from that. So we'll just pass turn. I don't have any good Rift Volt targets either. The real question is, how am I going to kill them? I guess it's Celestial Colonnade. So they have one card in hand. They can make a creature. Okay. But if they try and like jump a creature with a Johnny, I can just stop it from attacking. Flying and Double Strike. Yeah, we could just stop that from attacking. Then we can kill a Johnny with Ink Moth Nexus. Choose a card name. I will name Rift Bolt. Now they know about that. Um, we can kill a Johnny. Up takes a Healy. I mean, I'm actually getting close to winning with a Sahili Ultimate. Kill a Johnny. Getting better. Yeah, we're just gonna win with a Thopter army. Um, so they're gonna move to combat. I'm gonna keep Reverend Hunter tapped. They don't do anything. Okay, I don't even have to show them swords then. Baleful Strike. So I have to cast Rift Bolt. I guess we'll just go face. Draw oh, two. Quarantine Field, I think, just does it. Um, we're gonna make another thing. Servo, I guess. Play Baleful Strix. Two, three, four. Yeah, Baleful Strix seems pretty good here, actually. Play Sacred Foundry. So they're gonna make an Adanto token. That's fine. We have no attacks. Uh, actually, I think I can set up for like a win next turn. Oh, these don't have flying. <laughs> I thought they had flying. Whoops. That's rough. It happens though. So I can keep one alive with swords on Adanto Vanguard. Then they make a thing. Ooh, wait a second. What is cast out going to target? Edifice. All right, well, I can stop this from attacking until my next turn, which is pretty good. So now, I mean, they, I think they're actually just dead now. Because I'm going to quarantine field their entire board, pretty much. They have no cards in hand. They get to make one creature. But they're drawing Rishkar. What is that? Oh, sure. And I'm drawing Prophetic Prism. Okay. Um, let's down tick Sahili. Near Deadlands and just play this for as much as I can. How much X can I get? One, two. Three, four. Guess I don't need that much. How much does this cost? X is currently two, so I need white, white. And then one, two, three. X is three, so I just want four. All right, X is four. Didn't need to use Sahili after all, but I think that's probably lethal. Oh. <laughs> they, they get a 2-2 a two -two with lifelink. I'll just send them a smiley face. Because it's just so hard for me to type. Interesting. Maybe I should have done it for more just to prevent that. Four non-land permanents. One, two, three, four. They have a 2-2 two -two lifelink that actually like shuts me down for a turn, but that's fine. We'll pass turn. I still have seven cards in deck. I think we'll be fine. I knew they were drawing that. And they can still make a lifelink thing, so we're going to stop this from attacking. I kind of don't want to play the prism, but... Right. Yeah, because I will deck myself with my prism here. Let's activate colonnade. One, two, three, four, five. Make us a Healy thing. Attack with just colonnade and the Baleful Strix. That's five. They're going to die very quickly. Play Vivid Meadow. Pass turn. We can stop the vampire from attacking. I'll actually let them attack. I don't really care. All right, so we shrink, stop this, whatever. I just need counters on it. I don't even know what I have left to draw towards, so we're just gonna draw naturally. Well, that one's a bit awkward. Um, there's no point in going all in though. We can just, again, activate Colonnade. One, two, three, four, five. Hit them in the air. Cause I, I wanna, ooh, did they draw a removal spell? Dramoka's Command, that fights that, sure. I sacrifice an enchantment. Oh, clever. That was an insane draw. All right. Wow. That was an insane draw. Okay. You get a Shalai. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they can actually block and pump or take it. That is weird to me. Now they're very dead. Um, 
Yeah, I think now they're just very dead. That was a good draw, though. But yeah, they could have... I'm pretty sure they could have blocked the Celestial Colony with Shalai and then pumped everything. Okay, yeah, we're just going to planar outpush, put it on the Needle Spires and kill them that way. Can't attack. Yeah, that seems more fun to me. So they have no cards in hand, and I can stop the thing from blocking. Yeah, so let's animate. One, two. I guess Colonnade just makes more sense here. Colonnade, one, two, three, four. Um, or I need one white. We'll go here, and then I have one, two, three, four white sources. Wait, do I have enough mana? This costs nine? How do I win this? All right, I'll do it the safe way. This is way less fun, but that was game one. I did not know that. <laughs> oh, no, I played way too slow. Oh, no, I thought that was game three. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> this cube has that effect on me. All right, I don't know what game this is. I'm going to keep. We got Prophetic Prism, so that's good. Maybe opponent will tell me. Just game one. Okay, so I, I can lose a game and still be fine. We just got to get max F6 equity. That's scary. Um, play this tapped. I don't think I don't think it would be Soul Divinering turn two anytime soon. Tempered. Ooh, that's good. But I can Royal Spout the Experiment one. Um, I guess I do play the Crater Maker because it does save me a bit of damage. Um, I just have to draw land next turn. I don't know why it's so hard for this deck to draw lands. I'm running 18, quite a few cantrips. They Fairgrounds Warden. Yikes. All right, well. Game two might be lost, but I, I could draw my board wipe. So now I'm just drawing to that. Oh, and it, oh gosh, that even evolved the experiment one. Okay, I do draw a land. So we can play Prism. And I draw another land. Okay, this is better. So now I can play Needle Spires. Take a pretty big hit. And then, then what do I do? Because my opponent did not see my board wipe, which is good. They also did not attack with Tempered Veteran or Pump. Very interesting. Kind of like returning the experiment one to hand or putting it on top. It feels like I don't know why they didn't pump with the tempered veteran, but this really slows down their attacks. I can go down to seven. They path their own experiment one. Yikes, but okay. Mm. Oh no, I could just fetch a basic island here. Okay. Basic island or scrubland, but I need blue. I play that, play chromatic star. Because I, I want to hit 5 mana next turn so I can play Angel to block. Because, I mean, it's only 2 damage. Gracious Hydra is big. It has Trample. So, <laughs> if my 2 draw steps are land plus board wipe, that would be absurd. I will accept Banishing Light, though. Let's correct this for black off the stomping ground. Because I do want to hit a land. That's a tapped land, but good enough. So we Banishing Light the Hydra. I fall to five. Play this. Go. I can Angel of Invention. It creates a lot of blockers or one big creature. Codebots is really chatty. What it's got something going on. Cathar's Crusade makes their creatures big, but they don't have any creatures at the moment. Three, four. It's very mana efficient to play Sahili into Soul Diviner. But then I don't get the attacks with the Angel of Invention to gain life. Um, it's so mana efficient though, I can't not do it. Two, three, four. Play Sahili. Because if they don't have a creature, Soul Diviner holds down the team. Sahili makes a servo. And then I can actually use Sahili to make um, my Avenger of Zendikar cheaper. Which will be cool. We just need them to not have like a bunch of creatures here. But I think they missed land drops, so this could be very bad. Okay, Hydra for two. Doesn't hit Nyssa. They, sh they could have done it for three, but they chose not to. Because they have Endless One for one. Okay. Attack me with both. I'm going to chump go to two. They have no cards in hand. Uh, do I want to chump with a servo? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I do need to hit a land. I guess I can just um, Prophetic Prism to make it castable. Well, it seems fine. The 2 3 is a better body. It can at least block Endless One, I guess. Edifice. <sighs> Not drawing a land there was so bad. Um, I guess we gotta hope to fade a creature here and just play Angel. And this obviously has to make creatures. Make a servo. Pass turn. 
So I need them to miss on creatures. Just draw a land. That's not missing. It's a spell. A very good spell. Okay. Well, I have a nice block on the endless one, so that really can't attack. Right now this seems pretty... Uh, actually, it's not that straightforward. Block here. Double chump. Kind of like that. Keeps my angel alive so I can start gaining life. I have four minutes left, so I pretty much have to win this game. We're going to get a counter to draw. Valor Stance is good. Quarantine Field also good. They have no cards in hand. Uh, I can do it for one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can hit three things if I down tick Sahili, which will be Fairgrounds Warden, Cathar's Crusade, and a Danto Vanguard. I think I like up ticking Sahili. Play this. Pretty good card. We hit Fairgrounds Warden, Thor's Crusade. Actually, maybe I just hit the Adanto Vanguard. Hit them for two in the air. Gained a bit of life. I have Edifice to deal with creatures, and I can Valor Stance another creature. So, like, I think we're doing okay. Oh, that's great. Um, Baleful Strix. Blood Crypt is good. We're going to keep that in hand, actually. The next spell you cast this turn cost one less. I think I'm better off just upticking Sahili, hitting in the air, saving Blood Crypt for Avenger. I'm at six now. They can make that bigger, sure. I have three minutes to win, but I think I can do it. Dramoka's command here would be, I guess I have Banishing Light. Reverend Hunter I don't care about, so let's stop this from attacking. And I'm going to remove a counter with Soul Diviner so that I could figure out what happens <laughs> off the quarantine field. I think it, it's fine. But we'll find out together. Oh, I keep forgetting about that. All right, we'll just move it off Sahili. It's an enchantment, so it doesn't even work. Probably a lot of people were telling me that for a while, but we're going to Valorous Stance, kill the Tempered Veteran, I guess. They pump that, sure. Make a servo. Yeah, I was supposed to um, play Avenger of Zendikar, but I don't think it matters here, really. Attack them for two. Unless they're running a Wrath, which would be very impressive. And even then I could just start, like, colonating. Oh, I let them attack for no good reason, but I don't think it matters. Alright, do this. Go ahead and play Avenger. Green. Two. Why did it do that? Green. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Play you. Remoka's command. Fight. All right. I sacrifice Banishing Light. They get back the Hydra. Does pump their team. I get all my friends. I think opponent's going to say GG's. Wrong order. Oh, I don't think it matters so much. Um, we can play Scrubland. Up to Sahili. Attack in the air. Setting up for a Sahili ultimate. Because why not? I'm at 10. Like, pretty safe life total. We're going to stop the Genesis Hydra. I guess Voracious Hydra from attacking. GG's. Oh, we did it. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, that deck was sweet. It uh, performed pretty well minus round one. I actually forget why I lost because all of the rounds in this cube have been so long. Like, extremely long and grindy. Partially probably because of the decks I draft, but this deck felt great. Um, I just... Had trouble drawing lands for whatever reason with 18 and like quite a few cantrips. But when I hit my lands, I mean, I don't think many decks in the formats are built to handle this much removal. <laughs> Avenger of Zendikar, <laughs> a very important splash card in my deck. It works, right? You only need to cast it once to win the game. So yeah, this was sweet. Thank you guys for watching. This is probably going to be my last of these. They just, they take forever to record, man. Like, I'm sorry. This took like... I edit them down for you, but it's still probably like an hour and a half. And for me, it took like three hours to record. So we'll, we'll maybe do some Penny Dreadful or something. See you guys there.